プラズマプロダクションプレゼンツプラズマバースポッドキャスト Hey everyone, here Filippo with、uh, one of my personal legend, Maddie Brown. How is it going, Maddie? Really good, man. Really good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fine. So, Maddie Brown, you, you might know Maddie as a filmmaker because、uh, for me, the first time I met Maddie via、uh, Vimeo, you know, I saw tons of videos he shot、uh, around the world with this. It was a Canon 7D. What, what camera you used back in the days? I actually used an. HV20 or、oh. H, whatever that, the like little Canon that took little like videotapes. So, like,、yeah. most of my like videos were done with little like videotapes because I <laughs> to, to get a camera and then I started to borrow a friend's、uh, S7D a、mm-hmm. couple times. And so, I and I, I didn't even know how to use it. I just I, I didn't know what like ISO was or any of that <laughs> stuff. So, people looked at the camera saying, What the fuck are you? Yeah,、doing? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so people kept adjusting stuff, but I think over time I just kind of you know, tinkered with it until I understood it.、Uh, I still don't know what things mean or what lenses I use or anything. I just know like which ones do what, and I just kind of play with it until it looks right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You are just making things that, that speak, s you know? That, that yeah, was the yeah. thing. Yeah. And that, that's、uh, one of the things that amused me the most of everything、uh, you, you're doing since, since now. And, Uh, for the ones that d o e s n t know, Maddie is、uh, obviously a director, also a screenwriter and editor. It's on the edit phase of, of his uh, first um, feature, and we're going to talk about that too. But, Maddie, I want, I want to start from like,、uh, th- this, this thing about the f- filmmaking you know, thing, about how you know, everything started. So,、uh, maybe tons of you know, the, the, the listeners that are listening to us、uh, know you, and maybe Also, I've、uh, seen one of the most, in my opinion, impactful,、uh, impactful video that I、uh, also see on your、uh, Vimeo, which is A Colorful Life. It's a really strong、uh, video. And also, I, I want to like, talk about this on, on, maybe on the professional, on the personal side, because one thing that I admire about you is the fact that, as you said a few minutes ago, a few, a few seconds ago, is the fact that you didn't know. What you were doing with that camera, with that specific you know, technical thing that you have in your hand, but you were doing things that speak. s And I, I remember you know, watching the, the first time one of your videos where you were like filming pictures or filming videos or like、uh, filming things、uh, freely handheld in a way that, in my opinion, you, you, you made like a personal task that later. Uh, created like a scenario filmmakers that, that you know use that zoosh transition, or the,、yeah. I, I, as far as I can remember, you, you invented that. You, you want it's maybe a big word you invented that, but as a filmmaker,、yeah. you were one of the first ones that I saw online, you know, do, doing, doing this. Well, and I, I, I did that out of like you know, I like felt like I needed to because I had such a crappy camera that I. <laughs> Couldn't you know, compete with all these high end you know, cameras out there. So I needed to give the audience or just not give them enough time to, to, to like, notice how bad quality my camera was.、Mm-hmm. So if I kept it moving constantly and made it look <laughs> like all the dirtiness was on purpose, and I put, like a, I put my like, s- lens to make it even worse, even uglier, I put my fingers over the lens and I Was just kind of making the camera go everywhere, but that was just because I i didn't want people to know that the camera was. I, I, I just wanted to make it look like it was on purpose, like it was、mm-hmm. like nostalgic, like your memory, like and like you're going into, into like a person's memories, basically. And uh and so that's how I got started with like you know learning how to edit and shoot and all these things and how to shoot so I can edit a certain way. And if I want to do something to trans. I also stutter, by the way. I, 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 I haven't talked to Lucky, you know,、problem. like it's n a c e so I haven't worked all my stutters out yet. <laughs> <laughs> no problem.、Uh, so there's certain, like, you know, consonants, I, like S's and stuff. But、um, uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's how I got my started, like, was because I, I didn't, you know, leave the house for a long time and I was kind of too scared to go outside. I'll, You know, if anyone's seen the pieces or anything, that was a part of the piece that was left out that I, I didn't go outside for a very long time after. And I was like filming bugs in the backyard with my little crappy camera, like little like slugs and grasshoppers, 
you know, and then, and then I put it to the music of the Dark Knight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, that, that, that's insanely just to, good. Just practice, you know, but it was those uh, videos that that started getting like, you know, I started kind of building this sort of style out of it and figuring out this sort of voice through that, and then I started becoming known for this, and then and then yeah, and then I started seeing everyone started doing the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. After a, after a while, I started getting a little bit. Not like bored, but just <clears throat> I, was, I want to do something different now because now I feel like it's everywhere and it's just not, you know, I don't know how how, how many new things you can do with it yet. Now that I see with like AI, this whole thing, like you're coming out with like, you know, Dolly and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a way to, to, to like incorporate that into the file to make something new out of it. But uh, but I'm kind of curious to see where, where people take it. But now I'm going into, you know, narrative stories mm -hmm. uh, and so that sort of jump from that style to like your narrative is a very interesting thing and you know challenging myself to like keep the camera still as long as i can before i i go off the thing you like you know so there's a lot of fun with that to play with all these different you know people like my you know dp on my film that i just did his name is uh, you know jeremy Snell and he's yeah, like okay. one of the most amazing eyes I've ever seen and uh, we just vibe so well on the shoot we just were so in sync with each other he totally got for what I did and was also good kind of challenging me to like can come in a shot and have the slow push in on it and build the tension that way rather than a lot of cutaways and stuff. there's other parts where we wanted to go crazy with just a lot of uh, like you know like a kinetic feeling with stuff and so there's this sort of ebbs and flow of that because for like a, a three minute piece you, you could totally do a crazy montage but for yeah. like you know like, like a two-hour film you will you, you would never be able to keep like you like the people there for that long doing that you know? yeah so it's a good a nice you know, challenge of like storytelling <clears throat> for sure yeah yeah how, how you live this kind of explosion i'm gonna call it an explosion because i think that everything uh exploded from Vimeo or it was from other social medias? Yeah, it was absolutely. Uh, Vimeo was uh, like sort of my fairy godmother in a way. I feel <laughs> like everyone there because they were so in love with film and f filmmakers that they just, uh, the, the way they sort of <clears throat> coddled me as a filmmaker and nurtured me to kind of in, and like building me up, encouraging me and pushing me so hard, they would reach out to me if I didn't have anything online for a while saying, where, where, where are you, man? <laughs> yeah. You know? And so those sorts of things like really kept me like, you know, going and actually made me like, you know, believe in myself, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and there's still a few of them there, but you know, ever since Vimeo became pretty corporate and like a lot of people started leaving it, it's, uh, I, I, I wish it would come back to that kind of, uh, neighborhood feeling. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it was for sure. Another era. Uh, back in 2011 maybe 12 10 you know uh, for sure another thing but i one, one thing that i i could add but by, by the thing that you said that uh like everyone then you know um started incorporating like those transition those things but anyone you know um have never you know uh and i've never been able to incorporate you know how you really you know manage that storytelling because i, I remember you know from uh yeah talking also about some sequence from from the colorful life the, the part with the, with the cars little toy cars and also uh transitioning from photos and using your hands that that's that's i have you know uh some some clips from like the first weeks that i uh was with my you know, my actual fiance my, my, my girlfriend you know uh we, we were around with my old canon 5d mark ii and i remember like doing those transition with man uh, so far from your <laughs> films and i remember that, that it was stunningly impactful in an incredible way i remember her watching the montages it was like that that's like a dream that like in a montage from a love story of, of a movie and 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 that was like that kind of medicine on on everything and i always tried to defend you because i i, I remember who knows me know that because online uh, with all the respect for Leonardo, you probably know Leonardo D'Alessandri, the, the director that made the What's Our yeah, After. Yeah, uh, it's Italian. Uh, I don't personally know him, but 
like everyone is uh, Leonardo invented this type of monte. And it was always like, no, Maddie did that before, like five years before. Look, look at this. For, and I, I love that montage, but you know, I'm I'm like hundred uh, percent sure that he watched all your videos because like it on on this uh, work even now there is like your sign on everything because it's like rewatching your uh, videos you know around Italy dreaming Italy uh, and all all those kind of videos that I remember back in the days <laughs> for me it's like you you made this uh, but 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 like anyone uh, ever you know ever been able to like truly we represent uh the, the, the way you you did storytelling uh in, in that that greatest way you know and also you know on really advanced work that you also did that distraction dreamcatcher i always saw your touch even if uh probably you there wasn't as a filmmaker but as a director obviously on, on the distraction and yeah. on the dreamcatcher you you yeah, you you, you haven't filmed uh, yourself or or did you film something? I didn't shoot those ones, but mm -hmm. I but I did edit them, mm -hmm. and I was so specific with how how they were shot, knowing exactly how I wanted to edit them, even the tiniest little things, and even on uh, Dream, you know, Catcher. There's you know, it's a four minute piece or whatever, but. Uh, my shot list, they said, was as long as a feature film. They said, there's no way you're going to be able to get this in like, you know, three or four days. And I was like, yes, yes we will. <laughs> we can give up a book. And so I, we, we actually shot everything and more than what was on the list. We were able to get every little detail, like these really extreme close-ups and like your butterflies and all these different stuff. And, uh, and, you know, it was the middle of like winter, we had a ship, you know, butterflies, and it was this whole ordeal just to get them. And then, and then I had hundreds of butterflies in my like, you know, like, you know, um, mudroom flying around it because I didn't want to let them out. So I was trying to feed them in this. So it was just kind of this crazy fun uh, experience. But, uh, but yeah, no, I think with like, uh, this uh, feature film was my first, uh, my first, uh, you know, or one of my first experiences because there's a lot of commercials and stuff. But that, mm -hmm. that, that I, stuff like that but uh but uh, like handing over the reins to an editor uh is a big deal for me on something like this because i'm also very specific with the edit on this yeah. you know and, uh and i don't know if you've seen the movie the uh um uh, others with um um nicole kidman oh yeah uh, sure it's like a spooky sure sure, sure sure uh so I, so I was just on a Luke saying, what if we got the editor of that movie? Because he knows, like, you know, tension and you couldn't uh, see anything the whole time. It was just about, like, your paranoia and how it plays with your mind and really screws you up in your head. And I thought that he did such an amazing job with that. And that was a huge inspiration for me as a team watching films and stuff. And so he read the script and he loved it. And so he's editing it right now, which is really crazy. Oh, my so God. Really, That's like, crazy. Uh, excited about, you know, talking with him about just his nuances of like or in the films a psychological you know horror you know mystery it's yeah. very like atmospheric and all, all those kinds of things so it'll be fun to watch him like edit that and play with it you know that's so. incredible <laughs> that's incredible and you know ab about the way you know you you also think because right now obviously you you, you kind of translated the way you uh use obviously to to work when, when you were a filmmaker as a director, how, how hard is, you know, to translate the way you think the script and all, all the fact that you said, said that the Dreamcatcher was that long, you know, how hard is right now to like compensate the fact of not having super long uh, scripts or edit notes or you don't probably, <laughs> probably you, you, you do you know, super long scripts or super long, uh, I don't know, t tell me about your, your, your vision on that, how, how you do. As far as like uh, going from smaller pieces to longer pieces, mm -hmm. or I mean, I think with the smaller pieces, uh, there's a lot more room to play. You can totally explore more because you have more time and you can experiment more. Mm -hmm. I think with longer pieces, because there's such a massive crew, there was like a hundred person crew on this, and it was so like you know, meticulous down to the minute. Yeah. So we had like <clears throat> 15 minutes to shoot this crazy moment and we had to get everything in gear so you didn't really have time to really experiment 
So uh, you know, beforehand, we like allotted out a certain amount of time to go play and if we had time. And so we really like made sure to fight for that time to be able to do that. And, um, and as far as like script wise as well, like all the details of the arcs and the things are, are so much more elaborate, uh, you know, painstaking because for a short piece, your like arcs are so small that the like, attention span doesn't have to be that intense for like an audience member that they can eat it in a bite size. But then when you stretch that arc so long, you have to multiple arcs, things that are constantly piggy, like you're backing them off onto the next scenes and keeping them moving forward. So you're like basically making a hundred short films back to back, yeah. back to back and keeping them interested all the way through. It's, it's uh it's very, uh, there's a lot of pressure in that. A lot of, it's very like, you know, you, you know, daunting to figure mm -hmm. that out. Um, and I wrote probably six different feature films before I got to this script, uh, cause it was too expensive or it was too this or, or it wasn't, you know, marketable or whatever, but I learned a lot getting to this script. And, uh, so they like, just gave me like one thing where they said four, four actors, one mm -hmm. location. And so my mind was like, okay, uh, how about four actors on a little island in the middle of the sea? <clears throat> and, yeah. Uh, and we have to shoot it in 20 locations. It's not one, it, 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 it is one location, but it was shot all over the place. So it became this, I just can't do anything if it's not really ambitious or really, uh, I just love like mind fox and going down the rabbit hole of your mind and seeing things that are unexpected that pop up and stuff. And, so this film is is a surreal nightmare, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, going, uh, you know, things get clearer and clearer as the film kind of uh, goes forward. But but you're but you're like you know, definitely falling into a mystery for sure. <laughs> I can't wait to 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 see it. I can't wait to see it and can't wait to see what 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 you you also have. Have you, have you something planned? You know, also after this, uh, are you writing something? If I can ask, actually, I'm actually just done with the like sixth draft mm -hmm. of this new script, and mm -hmm. my you know partner and I just you know, co-wrote it over the last couple of years, and uh, very excited about it. So now with, with this first film, you know, coming out, it'll be much <clears> easier sell this other one this other one is even more ambitious which is yeah. hard to say because this first one was like crazy like like you you have to you had to have been crazy to to make this first film any of the crew members on it had had to be crazy to do it because it is it was it was a thing that everyone in like los angeles and like you know, everywhere said it'll, it'll like never get made it's too complicated it's just it's just like it's like a like um a logistical and like you know technical nightmare that like no one would say yes to it and so yeah. i you know in los angeles i got pretty like just you know courage and i was like oh god maybe maybe i went the wrong route with this one but i i'm in love with it i I'm, i think it's incredible and we just kept fighting for it and finally someone picked it up and <laughs> yeah and Uh, and yeah if, if you love it i think it will be like everything i saw so far you know it's like it's like i don't know it's uh for me it's like getting a tattoo from from my, my favorite tattoo artist i don't even have to watch the the art you know the the final the final the final tattoo that will uh, that will hink me i i am pretty sure it will be incredible so that that's great to know and you know about this craziness i i, I i'm sure it's been you know a, a really strong uh you know jump even because you know the fact of being working with a crew where like everyone is like oh no i'm a focus puller i can't screw that 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 little thing here i can't touch the land i can't do this i can that maybe maybe translating from doing everything yourself or maybe with, with someone that can help you to to this it might be a really strong impact even because you're directing i, I can't say that because i am mainly a dp so I'm more on the tech side, but I can feel that it might be a hard, kind of a hard jump, you know, from, from this to that. It's weird because at, at heart, I'm more of a collaborator because I, I, I'm really, I'm really a champion of the best idea mm -hmm. and I like taking ideas from everybody and mm -hmm. listening to things. And 
I want people to to debate my my like imagination until there's no more holes in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I want people to attack what I'm trying to do so I can you know defend it. Mm-hmm. And the more you defend something, the more concrete it becomes. Like okay, this is what it really looks like because that was yeah. a hole. That was a hole. And I think and so I think having such a massive group of really creative people we we got really creative people on this film and uh the way they fought for their own vision of what things look like as you creatives i you know if you can if you can cherry pick the people that you really like and you really uh you know respect as like artists and trust them i think you just let them go play like children in a playground and let them do their arts and trust them you know yeah. and in, in the moment you start looking up with their shoulder or the, the the like the sooner they're that they're gonna be less in their craft and more aware of what you're why, why are you looking at them a certain way so once once everything gets set up that's when you can come in and say oh yeah i just want the light to be a little <clears> here and you need to move this table over here so then you start tweaking things with them and you start to collaborate at, at that point too but even with the editing right you know i I want him to just play and just mm. have a few weeks just putting it all as a big rough base edit down and then and then we can talk after that because I just want him to be emotional with it and and not have have me constantly looking every single day and just telling him things you know yeah uh, I think that's the kind of best way to do stuff and and I've only done stuff by myself out of necessity because I you know I have social anxiety and and I uh you know, didn't have any equipment and I couldn't mm. hire people. You know what I mean, so I would do it by myself, wanting to collaborate, but I was always too shy to ask or yeah. whatever, you know. Uh, so I've been really, really fortunate to have people literally force me out of my shell and do stuff. And, uh, and yeah, and, you know, even on set with all these people, like, I would be so extroverted on set, very extroverted, very a- a- animated and alive. And the moment our lunch break comes, I would go hide and eat my lunch alone because I was <laughs> not like, affecting me more. And I was back to being Maddie, this like shy guy, you know. And so I would go eat lunch alone, and then I'd come back out and go back <laughs> and stuff. Even at, even at the wrapping the party, I was the first to leave because I was so shy and just uh, that's just not. I'm not very social in general, but but the moment I talk about art, like now, I can talk for days you know <laughs> yeah 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 I, I completely feel that and also you know about about you know the old crew i think it's important mainly for you that your director feeling them like as family members even because you have to be completely open and also the the thing that you said giving the possibility of expression to an editor a, a colorist a dp you know get, giving them this is is like um letting them becoming an extension of you. Even because I I personally as DP feel that because I search, I look up for directors that I literally fell in love with and I'm, I, I, I beg them, I please them to let me just give you something because I know that your, your film is going to be great and I just want to give you the best that I can. So uh, maybe on, on that side, it's a thing that on... Uh, you know, socializing and maybe helping a bit uh, on, on on the human side that 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 helped for sure. Um, that helped sure a lot. Totally, and actually, like you know, I'm you know, as I said, I'm, I have social anxiety. It's hard for me to meet people and stuff like that. So I do a lot of these little things because I I, I, I love to prank people. I love to s- surprise people and stuff. And uh, so I brought in the, our first office meeting with all the. You, you know heads of all the different like you know departments and stuff are all yeah. in there we're going to go through the script for 13 hours little details it was crazy and i just like nonchalantly put little fake you know cockroaches all over the place <laughs> and then suddenly someone screams and then it becomes this pandemonium kind of a thing and people freak out over this cockroach in the room and then it breaks the ice between everybody then then then, 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 then everyone shares a memory now they they feel human with each other because of this moment and they can laugh about something with each other. And then it kind of brings all the tension down of like meeting people and stuff like that. So I, I do a lot of that. I have like fake teeth and fake blood and <laughs> random weird shit in my, in my backpack, my little red you know, backpack. <laughs> <everywhere>. <laughs> just 
It's just full of praying patterns, just to constantly get people to be uh, free and just kind of loose around each other. You know? just, you know. Yeah, <laughs> should, I, me. yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's a thing that everyone should do. You know, cockroach on on like uh, script day for yeah. everyone. <laughs> everyone uh, uh, screaming, uh, that would be great. I have, um, I have a question from our Discord server, uh, from another one of your uh, fans. Adrian is asking if uh, you have a story that he always wants to dive into, but never got the chance to tell uh, yet, maybe. That one project that secretly burns inside, but just haven't gotten around to do yet. That's the question. Yeah. Well, this one I'm doing now was that one, but the next one is like... It's a new I'm, one. It's a new dream. I'm out with this this script, I've you know, been, you know, in love with it for the longest time. It is like a roller coaster. It's like a it's like a common horror, and I want to really play with people's emotions and, you know, making them confront their own feelings on things, making them laugh at things that they shouldn't be laughing at, and really making them kind of confront these emotions. This, you know, I can't really say much about that one right now, but it goes down the, you know, rabbit hole of, you know, dementia and elder, like abuse and these really intense, you know, topics that no one wants to talk about. But it does it in a very fun, crazy, fun house way that uh, is very, um, uh, yeah, it's going to freak people out for sure. <laughs> Which one was that? You, you, you also did that one really loud with that couple of oh, oh, oh the tangents one. oh yeah that was incredible i love it I love i'm it. i'm i almost didn't post that one because i it wasn't um, what i wanted it was it was for a chocolate gym company okay and and they wanted me to do anything i wanted they said and they said it just has to be like love is war you know okay. what i mean and i was like okay so i want these people to bicker and they go down the rabbit hole but then uh i wanted to do it like an 80 year old gay you know you know couple and you know gay marriage just became legal at that time mm -hmm. and i thought it would have been interesting all these years and they're like in their 80s and they can finally get you know married and, and it creates this like resentment to the world almost in their minds and they start going down the <coughs> rabbit hole of their life going you know backwards mm -hmm. and they didn't like that gay and they didn't like that they were old and they wanted them to be in their 20s and all these different things and I was like why don't we, we meet in the middle and they're late 40s or something so we got this thing and and then it just got chopped into a thing that was more of a light comedy sort of thing yeah than what I was really going for but but I mean as far as like you know a practice thing and kind of uh, getting used to kind of you know actors and stuff like that it was really 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 fun and everyone was so cool on it they were all experimenting with everything it was cool <laughs> still brilliant you know even the way the way it is I, i love it even the fact also you know they 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 acted that in a really magnificent magnificent way also <laughs> you know that you know transition touch where everything is like falling apart <laughs> and then woo, i i really love it even rewatching this in the dream catcher and everything that you do it's it's a sign uh, you know it's like every every time seeing that met it did this uh 100 sure and also the fact that um as also a, a colorist i i see you know tiny details and things and i see if you shot a thing on a camera and the, the shot after with another camera i i literally see on some of your uh projects that you just don't give a fuck about that <laughs> I don't. you know like, yeah I, i knew that those pieces especially like documentary kind of things i feel like it can flip flop up all over the place and i get a lot of i've had a lot of criticize that kind of aspect and stuff. Oh, fuck and <laughs> I think just this idea, like not knowing, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't think anyone really does. They're, they're, everyone's all constantly experimenting and figuring things out. And, you know, I could have tinkered with it for a year and spent a bunch of money on it and figuring out like all the technical details of that. But uh, especially with like uh, a colorful life I shot mm -hmm. with my, shitty camera and uh and broken too like one of the things were coming off on it and so 
I, w- I was filming a lot of it on that. And then we shot the like, the like interview with another camera. It was just kind of what I had, the resources I had at the time. And, um, and it kind of just makes a lot of that sort of hodgepodge feeling a little more mm-hmm. uh-huh. fun for me. Yeah. And, you know, it's not that I do it on purpose, but it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's just whatever resource. I mean, I would have shot it with my iPhone if I, if that's all I yeah, had. I yeah. Film with the iPhone, you know what I mean? And, uh, I like I, even, you know, you know, I, I mean, like in Brooklyn for a while now, so I think I might do something with my iPhone here because it makes it a little more real, real life feeling rather than cinematic only. Uh, I would love to try to figure out something that makes Brooklyn kind of pop in a more realistic way. Yeah. Uh, and not like, you know, TikTok reels mm-hmm. feel, but like yeah. really cool. And I don't know, there's something about Brooklyn that I think lends itself to that. Mm-hmm. It's very dirty and <laughs> fun and full of life. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I mentioned that because every time I'm, I, I have, you know, some super geek or super tech that, Tell me about you know cameras and stuff. Obviously, I'm in a side where that where I have to like make a delivery. That Netflix requires some standards. You have to uh, set everything on the, on the colorist side. We are really tech, technicians on that. Side. Some of them are, are scientists, obviously. Uh, but you know, on on the artistry part, I'm always like, watch Maddie Brown. Look at that. It works. Yeah. And uh, look, look at the camera. It was a 7D. It was maybe alone in Italy doing things, but. Look how it works, look how the, the cinematic feel is present even with a camera like that and I don't really care, you know, about the, the grading and the depth of the field and the thing when I watch your your products, I'm totally sincere about that. Obviously, I always saw like that you upgraded uh, the, the, the gears and also involve a crew and become a director and it, it's obviously visible but if I open a video from 12 years ago, it's still good. And that that's the oh. that's the thing in my opinion. I still love oh, everything that it's in your video and that and it's and that it's not um, anymore in your video. Also there is something that maybe it's missing, but it's it's normal. But I remember every one of your videos since then. So be known about that. And all, all of them Wow, I, 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 actually was, I actually did take a few of them off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over it did. The last, uh, <laughs> Some of them were fun experiences. I mean, I, I kind of want to show a lot of the early, early stuff to see mm. how I was even slowly getting into that style and getting into learning how to edit. Because I don't, I didn't even know how to edit. Actually, you know, a Vimeo, they they were laughing at me because they were like, when they saw how I edited, they're like, how the fuck can you even do anything on here? Because you don't know what this means. <laughs> and then somehow I just learned all the cuts don't know what they are called or anything and uh at one point a client was like, can, you, can you crush all the blacks and i didn't even know what that meant and they're like oh my god i don't know anybody. <laughs> but i was sick and i think put a lot, a lot of you know a lot of tech uh aspects to it that are you know there's a lot of technical aspects that are really important uh you know to, you know all, especially to, to like know for certain you know s- circumstances like you know commercials and stuff like that and uh, and with this feature, like we, we we had very strict like standards on exactly what we had to shoot on, and we shot on the that the new RE. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Thirty five. I'm sure you know. R thirty five. Yeah, we shot on. Yeah. That's gonna be and, great. Uh, you know, Jeremy was really excited to shoot on. I think it was the first film Middle East to be shot on that. Oh, that's great! I've, I've, I've also, I've also our producer shooting a movie back in October with that, and yeah, it's incredible camera. You're gonna, you're gonna. I, I think that you're going to, um, you're going to like take every advantage of uh, image quality from that for sure. Yeah, definitely. There's like so much to play with too. Yeah, and the film is. Uh, there's a lot of, um, you know. The like in particular island that we're on too is so beautiful and the and the like in color. I don't know how much I can talk about, but the, the like in color. You know, palette is like sage and kind of a rusty brown. Yeah. Thing, like yeah. this kind of and then, and then and then of course like baby blue sky and then the seawater and the like and the pale yellow sand like so there's this kind of nice tones to it that uh, don't that like don't scream horror. 
Yeah. It's very, uh, very peaceful and serene. And that's what I think makes the film so horrific is the quietness of it. And that's what I wanted to challenge myself with this film is, is how the silence and nothingness is is uh, horrifying and not just like in yeah 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 uh but of course just like me and any of my pieces if you, if you put any of my pieces into a, a a wavelength of what it looks like uh emotionally or anxiety wise <clears throat> it usually a spike in the beginning to to say it's going to be intense and then it kind of calms down and then it slowly slowly builds over time and then by the end it's so explosive <laughs> i i want people to be able to handle it and it's unbearable and then right as it's as it's almost too much we kind of release it and let them kind of uh so it's kind of like music in my in a sense and even all those montage like travel videos and stuff but there is there's specific arcs to those that if you watch them they actually have emotional cues and they're just not not like a relentless montage transitions which i feel like to me don't sell me very well i, I love the ebbs and flows and to play with my emotions you know during any anything i watch so so this film definitely starts you know ramping up and up and up and the the, the you know the uh, attention of it gets gets pretty crazy and yeah man uh, you, you, <laughs> you you hooked me. Uh, I, I I feel hooked, and I want to see that so badly. So <laughs> I I really hope to to have it screened on a close film festival. You know, uh, I hope I hope any 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 soon. About you know about film. Yeah. Uh, yeah sorry. No, 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 no. I, I'm not sure. I, I can even say anything, so I'll, I'll just let you say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, about about you know the 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 directorial you know aspect. I I want to ask you if you have like few figures or directors that are like uh, really important to you or uh, that inspired you uh, becoming a director because maybe you know you you had a like um, a smooth flow becoming a director or you have phases where you wanted to be like I don't know a editor or someone working in our department, I, I don't know. Well, I think for, for me, the, the biggest thing I wanted to do was just, just like a storyteller. I didn't know yeah. if it was going to be just writing and stuff, but I'm a very visual person. So even when I'm, you know, at a coffee shop talking to a barista <clears> or something, I'm usually using my hands. And I'm very animated when I'm, when I'm, you know, passionate about stuff. So I've always been into like visual storytelling. I used to write Uh, stories when I was a kid, but that was because I was too too poor to have a camera. But I would write them and know exactly what I wanted, so I'd play a movie in my head. And then uh, once I got a camera, then I was like, okay, I want to make films, but I don't know how to edit, I don't know how to shoot, I don't know how to do sound design, all these things. So then I was practicing all these different elements that I didn't know anything about, and I was so technically stupid with that. Uh, I was like, I need to be able to learn all these if I want to be the kind of you know director that I want to be and be so precise with certain aspects and emotional cues and stuff like that. And um, and David Lynch, uh, he had a movie, well, you know, Mulholland Drive, you know, I didn't know who David Lynch was. I didn't know Mulholland Drive. I didn't know anything. And I was at a movie store and, and I like, mysteries and stuff and i just saw the cover and i was like oh this looks interesting so i watched it and i hated it the first time i saw it because <laughs> i was like what a pretentious confusing thing that makes no sense like this is so stupid and but then i got obsessed with it and i kept like thinking about it and trying to analyze it and then i watched it like 10 more times looking at every detail to figure out what the hell this movie meant and at that time the like the like you you know dvd had like 20 clues in it You, yeah. so it's like a real mist and he's like and he's like look at the red lamp and in this scene you know what i mean so i'm like analyzing why this why 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 he made this film and then when certain things started clicking i mean this is my own thoughts on the film but i, I just realized like he sort of gave me permission in a way to tell stories that were weird because those were the kinds of stories that i was writing weird mysteries that were a little bit dis, you know joining force you to really pay attention and to analyze things a little bit more and uh you can go into a story completely blind and clueless uh and then things start to you know wrap up and funnel into the truth or making it more clear made me realize that 
that I that that I could tell stories like that. I could tell stories in that in the sense of like. Uh, so, but just the way it was shot too, this sort of darkness and these creepy things, and it would go off on these different you know tangents of different storylines and stuff that that just like blew me away and. Um, and then, of course, like Requiem for a Dream, I'm sure a lot of people oh, yeah. look at that. And that film was <clears throat> my inspiration with like my my style, like cutting really fast and little details and stuff like that. I was so obsessed with that because I'm such an intimate, you, you know, person on every level with that that I want I want the details to paint the picture of the of the painting rather than the why. And I want, after you see this montage of all these things, you, you like get the portrait, you understand and feel what it is. Mm -hmm. So that when you see it as a wide toward the end or whatever, you really uh, grasp it, you know, uh, as what it, what it feels like into the yeah. intimacy of what they're trying to go for with that brush stroke, you know? Um, and then there's a trailer, I, I, there's a movie called Little uh, Children. That, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, I, I love the film. It's one of my favorite films. I think it's so impeccably done so beautifully done the way with the narrator so but it was the trailer of it mm -hmm. when i saw the trailer it's so calm and almost nothing seems to be happening but there's this train in the distance horn or that a, a train blowing in the distance and it's just this ominous thing in this really nice little neighborhood as the montage is building and i feel like that is where my mind really started going into the idea of montages mm -hmm. and i can paint a picture with with random seemingly random objects or movements or whatever and you when you compile them it's not random anymore they're actually a seamless emotion that you're on this roller coaster of this place and i found that to be really fucking cool uh so that 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 trailer of that film was a huge inspiration you know to me yeah. as far as my style and where i came from so i think that's where the real start of it came from <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. You, you also brought me the memory of like the blockbuster night I, I i don't know uh because i'm from italy maybe there is a different um connection with that but i i, I still remember even you know 15 yeah it was 15 years ago or something like to, yeah, yeah around that i remember like saturdays or fridays like going on and off you know from from this store like taking three movies and then uh <laughs> and taking all the, all the three movies and i remember also when i took the first time uh a series and and it was i think it was the walking dead in dvd and the the girl the shop said to me uh mm. this is like seven dvd seven episodes okay it's sunday i have free time and i watched the whole first season like in a day i remember that or tons of movies that 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 brings memory and um how you also live that transition and i don't know if you lived you know those kind of uh moments where you when I, i don't know i used to rent films and watch tons of movies from like streaming how you live that that, that passage if you live it maybe maybe you just uh purchase movies or just go to the theaters and, and not purchase movies i don't know i mean i'm always uh i think over the last couple of years i've been so like busy i haven't got to see a lot of movies and mm -hmm. unless there's a certain like you know director or mm -hmm. something like a trailer really sells something you know to me just emotionally or like a mystery or like a what if or something i'm like oh i want to see what that that what if is and stuff uh but i think it's weird i feel like the last few years has been a weird weird thing with uh, films there's been amazing ones but i i feel like there's this sort of uh there's a a quality to films that feel like they're not saying something or they're not mm. there's nothing like deeper deeper to, to a lot of things i think they're just making it for quantity and getting it out there just to have the quota or something i don't really know and understand uh how why that happened but i i always look at different you know decades of films and how in inventive like the 80s were and the 70s were and even the like you know you know you know 90s were a little bit more watered down but you could still sense like like a culture in that you could sense yeah. that and in the, in the 2000s i started seeing that lost a little bit more and then the and then the, and then the, in the like in 2010s I don't even know what that 
what you would embody that or how, how would you describe that in a decade of, <clears throat> of art in general as in like 10 words you know what yeah. i mean but but with all the other like you you know decades you could totally explain the, the chaos like you yeah. know like in the 80s you gremlins and ghostbusters and et and all these like weird things that were original that have never been done that just like you can't really replicate now you yeah. know yeah. Uh, in, in its own way but yeah no i think that's uh i i watch as much as i can and usually on on uh, streaming the last few years but i started going back to the movies again and really lo loving doing that i would rather <laughs> be at the movies than anywhere else and so uh, so i've been going again back to the movies when i have time yeah. now and saw a few a few movies this last year and yeah yeah f feeling the same thing about you know uh streaming i, I personally like I have subscription to every single thing around, like Apple TV, Prime Video, Netflix. But I'm like watching one movie each any I don't know how how many weeks because I I am like uh, watching movies from 90s, 80s, 70s, 60s that I haven't watched yet. And I think that in my lifetime, I just have that lifetime to like watch good movies. And in the end, you know, uh, there are already tons of movies that they need still need to watch that uh yeah but but, but for sure right now yeah it's a moment that it's kind of weird uh unfortunately with with serious too uh, i i mentioned you know walking that because obviously in that moment i was uh a lot inside that kind of um uh, super deep um expression of myself and just watching everything around i remember just watching an Hitchcock, an Hitchcock movie then maybe Walking Dead, and then maybe a romantic comedy. So, so something really different one from the other, but that's to find myself. And I found myself liking uh, tons of different things in the end. But yeah, that's another story. But but, but yeah, it's a uh, it's weird moment that I, I, I think it's kind of marketing and, you know, things that goes on in this way. You know, probably. Totally. I think just the competition, like, forces it to water down too yeah. and people are trying to to go with the flow of like uh how the climate of just where where people's minds are at <clears throat> and the world's at and stuff like that i feel like people are trying to try to na like navigate that and try to think two steps ahead of that of when, when the film's done will that be relevant then yeah like what will people feel <clears throat> um, and even a lot of like shows and you know movies that are woke i feel like they're they're losing a lot of the human element in that, i feel like and you know as far as as a as a as a gay man watching a film about a gay whatever or a movie or a show about you know, gay whatever i don't think a lot of them get gay people right because gay people have flaws they have issues they have all these things and they're scared to show it because they don't want to offend somebody and i'm like dude there's uh, gay villains out there's like really nasty gay people but there's like the that's the humanality of it like that's mm -hmm. what they should be showing is people in all different facets but also gay people that the film isn't even about them about their relationships or sex or whatever just letting them be who who they really are and not focusing so much on the gay aspect mm -hmm. which is i feel like a lot of like things they they focus too much on the other side to preach at you and i feel like that's yeah. I think he loses everybody, you know, other than the people who are, I don't know, guilty about their own shame in judging it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how, how that works, but, but, uh, but I'm excited to see people become more human and to try to like be more open to their own flaws and their own, like, uh, going into the world, telling honest stories and not letting studios and like, yeah. the producers tell you how you have to do things so you don't offend a certain type of person because <laughs> yeah you're 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 gonna win more people over by being honest you know yeah. What I mean? yeah that's how it how it works you know it's about honesty 100 percent, and I, I think that we're making few steps you know uh and, but, but but not more than a few steps because you know it's uh it's it's really hard and you know things happen on different direction and then you know we we we, we fall into like voids that i don't know make things just feel weird as they were not you know so it, it's kind of a weird situation right now but it, on, on some obviously uh, parts we are 
taking steps ahead for sure. Uh, yeah. Definitely. And I, mean, and I think, like, you know, even, like, with, like, this sort of language barrier of different yeah. countries making films you know, coming into the Western world, even, and stuff like that, you, you see, like, Squid Game, like, you know, yeah. Netflix did an amazing job bringing a film or a show like like that into the world because, you know, having a Korean language film in this <clears throat> I have friends who have who have never seen a foreign language anything. They yeah. just refuse to read a screen, and they they message me saying, "Have you seen Squid Game? Oh my god, oh my god, it's amazing!" Like it's, but it's creative and it's like telling a truth and honesty and how like horrible, horrifying reality can be for certain you know like people living under certain types of you know governments and stuff which is kind of what the world issue is right you know right now about classes and i think it's the biggest issue right now is yeah. that could fix a lot of things and they're they're there's they're like telling it in a way that is so creative that it could that it's entertaining mm -hmm. but it also has such a major at the same time and i think seeing you know netflix and other like you know companies making stuff that's that's a risk because it's not in their kind of you know demographic but they're kind of branching out and stuff i think that's a it's a just it's where where the world needs to be to kind of you know you know become one one giant country you know what i mean everyone Absolutely. is all with each other rather than all these borders everywhere which is kind of annoying yeah 100 uh, <laughs> 100 it's so strange that you're not Italian because you're you just still play a lot and I see movies in your hand, you know? <laughs> I actually do this a lot. Of, uh, I think that we influence you when well, you've been there. I guess you're going to Italy so many times. I guess just being there for so many times. I know mean, there was a couple years where I was going there like six times a year doing different travel videos and stuff. And I have an Italian mom there oh. and just there's a lot of. I, I have a huge you know, piece of my heart there and I always want to go back and it's always like always on my mind like those were some of the best times of my life there so I feel like just the way like the locals took me in as I was wandering yeah. by myself and, I, they, they, and like a lot of them didn't even speak English they just I should be near their house talked in Italian pointing at stuff on the walls, gave me something to eat and I was like I don't even know what's happening right now and then I went on my way it was like crazy it's amazing yeah every, so, everything here is super rural if you're not going in milan or like rome big cities everything uh here is super super rural you know it's really really simple i i i call my 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 hometown like hobbyville because it's like hobbyville from the lord of the rings uh and and the the, the all the guys around there are, are like hobbits because it's exactly like that and or also the form factor is also like hobbits because they, they are really short fat and happy happy all the time i love it i love it yeah yeah, yeah. We're, we're, and I'm, and, and I'm, what's that no no I, I want to ask you where have you been in italy but just finish what you were saying no i mean you know i think because i've been to like the Cata so many times uh now that i feel like that i i you know connected with that region so much and just really it, felt like home for a while it felt like i was going back home when i would go there uh and then i've been to you know a, a trentino area and all into the yeah yeah in the mountains there and like freely and mm -hmm. all these kind of that you know, just the whole top region yeah the northern the, alps yeah france and and then of course like rome and like in milan and all these uh you know different aspects but uh it's funny because I'm more interested in rural like adventure than like going to the to the heart of Florence or something where I'm surrounded by yeah. like, a bunch of tourists that in like don't speak like American English. And, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it, it, the people are more, more fun. It, it's crazy because if you go like uh, kilometers away from Florence, real Italy is there, but it's like one kilometer away from this the, the city center right. because. Uh, I think the, all the fakiness you can find about Italy is uh, Florence city center, Rome city center, Milan city center. You go to call those city center, then you have just to run away from them like one, two kilometers, and you find anything that you might need. Also, I, I, I want you to visit Emilia Romagna. I'm from uh, Romagna, it's nearby Bologna, uh, like mid Italy, and um, like 
going oh, around. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, going around there is always by about like passing from one hobbyville to another. It's uh, everything is super rural, super great. If you ever been there, I would love to to have you have you there. Uh, by the way, I got. Absolutely, man. <laughs> I, by the way, I got um, a few more questions for you, and then uh, just to wrap up the episode, I want to talk about um, yeah your your movie coming out. If you want to say something about it, uh, one question that I'm like asking uh, everyone since that since now uh, it uh, what do people because I love this one uh, what do people misunderstand about you the most? Misunderstand about. About your uh, about your yeah. work, about how you are, and maybe you do things for a purpose, or and maybe I don't know. People misunderstand that, or maybe there are just parts of you on the artistic side or on the human side. You're free to just answer how you want. Um, as a filmmaker, I think that I don't know if I I think with that aspect of it, I'm pretty uh, clueless mm -hmm. to. If people misunderstand me or not, because I don't understand myself a lot of times with <laughs> a lot of my choices with things, it just feels right. It's just like whatever I feel emotionally, you know, connected to is something that I, I just kind of gravitate towards. Like even the film I'm doing now, people are like, this is really ambitious. Why did you do this? How did you do this? But why? And then when they go down the rabbit hole, then they see why and where the stem comes from. And I think, uh, a lot of people, I think a lot of people don't understand the, you know, I guess just life-wise, just what the emotional struggle to come from my childhood to here has like really been like the toll, like from that moment in time still affects me greatly to every day of my life here today, waking up to going to bed at night, it's like, almost like it's kind of, you know, my soul or something in a way <laughs> that I, I can't explain, but uh, that, you know, I think there's a lot of things where, you know, people, I guess in general, don't understand how hard things are for other others around them, that people look very confident. They look very like they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. but I've kind of just come to terms with the fact that like we, like I said earlier, none of us really know anything about anything because we're literally little creatures on this yeah. little planet that are existing and not knowing why and not knowing what and we're coming into this world that's already built for us in a way that that people thought it was it could be very different you know we could live in hobbit holes if it went a different direction you know what i mean so i think with the i mean me as a as a person too it's like You know, a lot of people, I guess with, with, the, with the gay thing, people often misunderstand me thinking that a lot of my traumas or something come from that. But I'm like, I had bigger issues than being gay when I was a kid. And they're like, what's uh, what's bigger than that? And I was like, well, food, water, <laughs> all these things like are way yeah. bigger than like, and, and people get on my case about that. But, uh, but it's true. Like, and so I just, when it comes to being gay, especially in a world where a lot of the people I, I, I work with are, often, you know, very, you know, I don't want to say testosterone driven, <laughs> yeah. bro kind of guys that when you get in a meeting with them, they're all like, arr, arr, like kind of attitude. Uh, a lot of people think I'm, you know, like, oh, he's, he's, he's like, you know, he doesn't understand. I'm like, I don't give a damn about me being gay. It has like, it's literally nothing in my life. And I don't, Uh, it's not a it's not a big deal to me. I don't ever think about it, and I'm never uh, ashamed of it because it's something I can't. You know, I was I was born like this. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, but on the filmmaking side of everything, I think the you know I don't know. I'm actually curious to to, to hear what what people misunderstand about <laughs> or what people, so I can actually give context to stuff. Because I'm very, you know, I'm very open about stuff, and I'm very when it comes to just who I am, I have no, no shame in anything as a as an artist or that's or, great. Or my, my life, you know that, that, I mean? that, that's just great. I I found this as a interesting question because I'm seeing you know yeah. different responses, and uh, you know some technicians are like, ah, uh, yeah, I normally do this thing because it's correct, but you know people don't understand me. 
And so, I don't know, maybe on the human side, I don't know. Let, let's ask this to Mandy. But it's great answer also. And <laughs> oh, I love that question. It makes me think. Like I'm really trying to like like find something because I never thought about that. Before. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm actually you are uh, the third on this podcast, Syria, and I'm like pinching interesting questions and different questions. I, I I don't want like <laughs> let me talk about uh, uh, you know all those always those um, um, question related to I don't know. Uh, just your movie. I want to be open on the human side because I think that yeah, yeah. on this area, in the, on this area, it's quite more important. You know, um, talking about yeah. the human side, it's it's that like thing that tons of people doesn't never you know even cover for a minute. And and when I listen also to podcasts, I just want to feel human beings and know oh, what, what how they think, how they manage things. So on, on this part, I'm, I'm really you know interesting also about this next question that it's uh what's an insult you've received that you're proud of an insult oh wow if you are um, if you're I'm proud of, of something uh, uh if I there is i'm trying to think like on the film side i'm trying to think Yeah, maybe someone was, might have told you that you, you 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 should do shaky food days. I don't know things like that. that you're proud about that. Funny, I don't know. That when, when when people do that stuff to me, I don't even. I'm like, who care? Who care? I'm like proud of it. I guess. I guess. I guess I'm not proud of stuff like that. But I'm. I think with this film in particular, this uh, feature, when when the people started saying. You're doing this and this and this and this in your film. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? That's no, never get made. You gotta just move on and maybe like don't write for a while. Maybe you should stick to this and stuff. And so it like affected me. You know, I was like, wow, these are people I really respected telling me that. And I actually, it, it like hurt me, you know. And so it wasn't more of like pride and proving them wrong. It was more like, like the pride and like proving myself right that like I was, I was doing the right thing. And I was, I did have a, like a, 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 a vision in my head really pushed it, you know, forward. And I have amazing liking people around me. Uh, my liking producer, who's like my sister, you know, she is on my ass. You better not, don't listen to that. Fucker. Don't listen to this, do this, do that. And then she, every time a person tells her, no, she, she always says, Uh, I love a good no. She <laughs> she just loves when people say say, say no to her because she will get it in her head. I'm going to make it happen no matter what. And mm -hmm. people told us no so many times and she made it happen. And right. the, it, so I, I'm always looking up to her for stuff, you know, and uh, but uh, but that's why I think I'd like, you know, if I do a, a speech or a conference, like you know, talking to people or whatever, My, it's never about creativity or, you know, technical stuff. It's all about self, you know, doubt. Everything is about self doubt in my mind yeah. when it comes to creativity, when it comes to art, when it comes to everything, as long as you can really know how to navigate that, you can be free to make whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing that no one really pays attention to is the self, you know, doubt, the like eight of shit in your head. And I still have it. I have it every day and all these things. But you have to learn how to navigate that and to push through it and to <laughs> all this shitty script that was 90 pages and then look at it and say, okay, these parts were good. Let me keep working on it, give up. Like that, that's kind of what I do speeches on. So it's more of a, a like taking all those insults I get from people, people who I know are getting those insults too that like might might be more affected by it than, than me because I, I know how that feels. I was insulted my entire childhood in, in my 20s by everyone just beat up mentally by so many different people in the industry and all that stuff that uh, I'm kind of numb to it all the time <laughs> now. I'm just kind of doing thing. Uh, but now I, I, I love to talk about it with people who are like aspiring, especially when they're like aspiring and they, and they just don't know if they have in them, they don't have or if it will ever happen, if they have enough time, all these things. And those are the things that I really love to like dig deep in with like anyone to really push them forward. I get people every week messaging me, asking me for advice. And I just 
force myself to take that time. I need to tell them just to spill my guts for a moment, just to force them to get out there and just go fucking do something right now at this moment. You know what I mean? And just Absolutely. do it and practice and hate it. Just do it again and practice and hit it again. And then you like it more and more. You know what I mean? So I love doing that kind of stuff. It makes me feel good. You know? So I kind of channel all those insults in that basically. <laughs> Great, great question. I love it. Uh, is there a question that you wish I'd ask you? <laughs> hmm. A question you wish you'd ask me. Uh, and how you would have answered that. <laughs> really, ju just tough questions today. But it's the last one, damn. by the way. Last, damn, I don't even know. No, because I've been so busy, I'm like this... Uh, this uh you know combobulated in my head the last couple of weeks <laughs> <laughs> my brain doesn't even go to anything right now i'm, I'm uh, i think it would be you know about it's weird it's hard to think about no it's not the problem I, if you if the, you can you can write that to me later and then i will like post it because i will be tra uh, transcoding this <laughs> this this uh this call not just in a podcast and a oh, video, okay. but we, we, we will also be making a blog uh, article. So I think I'll be writing down some of cool. our Q and A, and it's going to be it's going to be cool, and it's going to be great because I think that uh, more questions will come. We will trigger some some interested ones. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> About that. It's a good question to ask. <laughs> I'll, I'll be I'll be waiting for that. I'll be waiting. And also, I, I I am I'm a bit you know and uh, I, I don't know what to expect because when I write wrote down you know those questions I was like, man I don't know maybe someone will, will virtually spit me in the face because it's too I don't know, <laughs> but you know uh, you're a really good guy so I I I, 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 I just think that it, it will have been cool to ask you this so. No, it's great. I'm actually glad that you could say like uh, it's nice to kind of go off cuff and you know talk about you know more internal things too, yeah. things that really make you think and really i think people who are probably out there thinking as well and not knowing you know how they're navigating stuff and trying to just you know just learn off of people's experiences because like that's all i have is my experiences and that's my reality so I, I can, you know, like whatever insight I can give, you know, <laughs> yeah. but I'm still like learning. I'm still, you know, figuring things out and even, you know, making a feature film, I'm learning so much. I feel like a, I love, like a baby again. I have like, you know, baby eyes on the set and stuff. It's like a whole other experience. Like, yeah. uh, cause I feel with, you know, travel, like, you know, like in films, I, I kind of got through that and like, okay, I get this and I don't want to go out and do another one. because I know what, I'm going to do with it and I don't want to evolve it anymore. I think I'm good with that. Then going to the, the you know, narrative and then going to shorts and stuff like that. And, uh, and a lot of clients want me to do montages and yeah. that sort of thing. And I just got kind of, I just decided I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, yeah. I would love to do it for fun, but I, I, I lost the fun part of it because I was usually doing it for fun. Mm -hmm. And then, then it's a client saying this, this like, you know, hotel, this plate of food, blah, blah, blah. And then it just got <coughs> less, uh, Fun for me so so i want more and you know i want to make films that are horror and sad and you know commercials do not let you make sad horror or anything it has to be happy go lucky yeah. and uh fun and uh yeah just happy <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Most, people, most people have most of the day so i feel like uh getting internal is, is a little bit better rather than the you know happy go lucky fake Fake, uh, which is what every single commercial is now. Yeah, and, yeah. Right. In the in the nineties, when like you know commercials were really fun and, and weird and off the cuff, and you're very sad to watch them. That was fun to watch them. Now it's like the same, literally the same thing over and over again. That they're afraid to go outside the box. So like, whenever I pitch for a commercial now, I don't even think about getting the job. I pitch the thing I want to do. And mm -hmm. so I'll pitch mm -hmm. it knowing that they're probably going to say no. And, you know, that's, that's, that's how my yeah. mind works. I want to yeah. do something ambitious. I want to make you think <clears throat> the product in your mind at the end of it. Because it made me have, have, an, have an emotional reaction yeah. to what I'm watching. 
I I, 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 I always say yeah. that. Uh, that that uh, I also love, uh, you know, uh, having my heart broken by by movies because I think it's one of the best thing. And also, my my favorite movie is uh, Hair by Spike Jonze. I don't know if you know that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I I, I I love that that movie in a personal way. That it's uh, insane. And and every time I I see like for the cinematography side, but obviously for for the. Um, for, for the movie itself, not, not just for the cinematography. It's just sure. rubbing the old movie in the greatest way. But yeah, having your heart broken for a movie, it's one of the greatest things, in my opinion. Not, not in real life, but in movie. Yeah, it, it's there it's and you, 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 you're you crying your heart off, but it, it's so good. <laughs> you cry for that. Again. Yeah, it, it's so... Yeah, it's no, really I love that. Yeah. I, I was just referencing that film the other day because uh, I was like, I wonder if it's like a if there really is a like a company that that like hand writes your letters for you, and, there is. And I can tell you, there is. There. Okay, wow, interesting. There, I, I I also get sponsor sponsors you know sponsor posts on Instagram for AI apps uh, where you can chat with, and if you want to like do nasty things, they generate images and they also wow. write your thing. Yeah, they're oh they're God, Yeah, they, they're going like on the third base for, for this thing. Wow. And it's kind of weird, but it's it's okay, you know. That's cool, dude. That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that I'll see someone here nearby me coming at work with an AirPod say, hi, hey, Samantha, my, my girlfriend is there or my boyfriend, whatever, you know. I'm pretty sure it will happen any soon, and I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure about that. You know, Matty, to 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 wrap oh the, the the episode up, you want to just talk a bit about the your your you know the situation in your upcoming movie, or just a few words about it, just to close up the episode. Yeah, I mean, I can't really say much, and they're you know I'm being just what you guys. what you can say, what you can say. Uh, it's it's a very um, very intense at, at atmospheric horror, you know, mystery. And um, it's, uh, I really want to play with the sort of, you know, the, the idea of delicate and ominous and, mm -hmm. you know, combining both of those emotions at the same time. And I think of, you know, I want the audience to feel settled and rip their hearts out at the end and, make them cry and I there's very few horror films in my life that that have made me cry and I want horror films to make me cry and so my goal is to make horror films that make you unexpectedly cry <laughs> and, and and like become emotional right. where you actually care about the character and it's not just a sense of dread even like you know her, like you know I think you know hereditary is such a beautiful film mm -hmm. and I wanted to cry when the girl's head was knocked off I wanted to yeah. cry when the family but I didn't. It was this, it was this heavy sense of dread and ominous like, anxiety the whole time. Mm. And I, you know, watching these sort of delicate, you know, you know, moments of the sixth sense or like you know, Candyman and stuff, where I really got emotional in those films. And but it's so rare to to find the films that like have a tender aspect to them. And mm. so hopefully, you know, the, 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 this film will will embody <clears throat> really uh, play with people's emotions. And, but I'm excited to go down this roller coaster and to like mind fuck people uh, in this journey through uh, this really intense film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we are we are all going to love it. So uh, thanks again for being here. Uh, it's been an honor yeah. for me, and I'm I'm I think that our the whole community will love it, and I'm <laughs> what's look forward you know to everything that you will be doing. Thanks again for being here, man. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, dude. <laughs> Plasma Production presents Plasma Birth Podcast.